Hello and welcome everybody to 1995. In 1995, you will remember when you wanted to be entertained. You sat down with your friends. What shall we do tonight? It's Friday night. What do you want to do? And the discussions went like this. Let's watch a movie. All right. And you all piled in your car, started up your terrible economy V6 Bronco 2 with that's been repainted because the desert had sandblasted it and long story rusty parts falling off in the parking lot Bronco 2 to Blockbuster you'd all pile in you'd get VHS's and DVDs came out in 96 so this was the last hurrah of the VHS and Blockbuster was still around and this was before Al Gore invented the internet before Redbox before Netflix before any of the streaming services or smart TVs and you'd pick out a VHS and you spent longer getting the VHS. You're like, afterwards, you're exhausted. You're like, all right, we find, whew, we finished Blockbuster. Now let's go get a bite to eat. And you'd go get a bite to eat. And then you'd go home and watch your little hour and a half little flick. That's what life was like in 95. Okay. So the 855S came out during this exciting time and it replaced the 845S, which was an icon in golf. How good could it be? Let's get this on the review table and, uh, have a closer look and talk about some identifying features. Pretty straightforward to identify. It looks an awful lot like the 845S with this cavity balanced idea. You'll see 855S, they couldn't name it 845T or 9, because the S, the S stands for something important. S for something important. Silver Scott, you know, red line, Silver Scott. There are two patent numbers down here up by the toe, not sure if that's gonna show up. And the iron number here in the cavity, as well as if you spin this around, you can see on the sole, Tommy Armour with the iron number. Some forgiveness here on the leading edge. You know, having a look at toe profile, at a dress, it looks like there's some offset here, kind of a big flat top line with this little matte portion right here. So more glossy, less glossy, more glossy again kind of a square toe there. Pretty interesting. No nonsense grooves right here. This is actually when I took it on the range. You can see I happen to do pretty well with this. You can see the brushed look right here. Absolutely super Tommy Armour on brand. You can see the white line here. I guess this is the lie indicator as people tell me in the comments for the 845S. So there's flat, normal, upright. Plain black ferrule, which is nice. I mean, it doesn't call a lot of attention to itself. Spinning up the stepped shaft, you can see true temper, stepped shaft. I put this date on here just so I can remember the year, 1995. It's upside down to you, but that's what it is. Tommy Armour branded true temper made in China. 1995, it has begun. This grip looks new. This looks like it's from one of the new irons. I doubt this isn't, because it feels really good. So I doubt this is one of the new, or I doubt this was the original grip because this feels way too good to be from 1995. So the Silver Scott 855S with the little biohazard symbol right there. I have no idea what that is. If you know what that is, let me know. The triangle triangle. To me, it looks like something you'd see out of a biohazard video game. Anyway, let's get this out on the range and see how it feels. Tommy Armour Silver Scott 855. The 855, that's right, the 855S. An evolution, obviously, from the 845S, which I have an interesting story about. So I go to Goodwill, I go to thrift stores, I look for vintage clubs. Hardly ever find any. You know, here in Wisconsin, it's not exactly prime pickings for like big name brands and modern stuff, but there, occasionally I find some vintage stuff. And a gentleman was looking at they use clubs, and so as usual, I walk up and just casually ask, hey, did you find anything good? First thing out of his mouth, I'm a golf expert. I'm a USGA certified instructor. I was like, oh, cool. I'm like, is that different than like a PGA certified instructor? He explained. Then he's like, if you want, without prompting, he's like, if you want a good set, you need to get a Tommy Armour 845S iron set. That'll last you your entire golfing career. A wonderful set. I was like, thank you. It's good to know. Uh, wonderful information. And obviously, the 855, is it... <laughs> How does it compare? Uh, so I was looking for a flat spot and I moved back and overlapping some of the golf balls I pulled to hit here. So let's move these out of the way. They are kind of, uh, they are kind of bothering me. But looking down at this, it's a thick top line, heavy offset here. 
this is exactly what you'd expect from a club in the 90s. And in 1995, that's exactly what we got here, competing with the Callaway, Big Bertha, the Ping I2. Let's see what comes out. I mean, that felt really good. When you hit, for me, being brutally honest here, carried over 150. Being brutally honest, when I hit anything out of the sweet spot, it doesn't matter if it's a blade, like a Hogan radial, right? It feels like it has, you know, not much forgiveness. But you hit it out of the sweet spot, it all feels the same to me. It just feels that, like, that solid, just like, did I even hit the ball kind of feel? That's what I just felt with this. And I'm not 100% sure I buttoned it out of the middle. But either way, that's what came out. And that's the feelings that I have. So it looks like the ball strike, there's a little grass stain right here. So maybe slightly heel bias, a millimeter or two, heel side. So, I mean, lovely uh, cavity and lovely results there. And that's, you know, obviously much more my shape, that huge draw. Not that huge, but a draw. So the next thing, obviously, is workability with range balls, with a cavity back. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so I'm just going to open the face a little bit, uh, think out to in thoughts, and just put it a couple inches further up in my stance. See what happens. So let's see. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? It definitely went higher. It looks like it's just a push to me. The wind picked up right when I hit that, I felt it. I don't know if you can see it, but maybe the flag showed it. But I felt like I got a tailwind from my left. So tailwind off my left. Uh, those are my ball strikes right there. You can see very, very centered. Uh, but lovely, uh, lovely little iron we got going here. So, uh, yeah, uh, if, you're looking for a new set, get a set of Tommy Armors. Last year, your entire golf career. Oh, I, went, I defaulted back to my, <laughs> to my crank one. Oh, well, anyway, lovely, lovely iron. I mean, you can't go wrong with 855S. If you're looking to start out and you just want to try golf for inexpensive, you can probably get a set of these for not too much money. I mean, 1995 Tommy Armour set. Uh, do I like these more than the 845S? Uh, to me, just my first impression is these do look a little bit better. But I'm going to think about it for a little bit. I'll tell you what the conclusion is. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 1995. All right. For drivers, the 90s was the nursery era of drivers, okay? So through the 80s, we lived with these small, hollow-bodied steel drivers. And then Big Bertha comes out. And then 95, great Big Bertha, titanium, you know, Mizuno. And McGregor had experimented with titanium drivers before that. And then by the end of the 90s, so we went from persimmons and hollow-bodied steel to big titanium drivers at the end of the 90s. Not quite to 460cc, but that really saw this like exponential rocket launch. We're going to the moon with drivers development. And with irons, you know, instead of going up, it was this crocheted jumble of sinking weirdness that was just slowly dissolving into this blackness of red tide. Does that make sense? It was just like everybody was on. Okay, let me show you. So Callaway, Big Bertha, instrumental in development of drivers. Okay, they're coming out with this, the Callaway Big Bertha. Okay, it's an okay iron, the, the big brick, another big stainless brick on the end of a stick. Ever golf with a brick? Here's your stick, you know? What about Ping? Surely they would continue releasing big chonker stainless steel cavity backs with flanges and weird curves with the Ping Zing and the Ping Zing 2. Titleist is not going to miss this boat. They need a big chonker too in the 90s. Ben Hogan. All right, Ben Hogan makes some of the sleekest, sexiest forged irons imaginable. So in the 90s, for sure, 100% sure, they're going to get on that bus. Sorry, I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. Ugh, the Ben Hogan GCD Edge. Are you kidding me? Ben Hogan would look at this and say, take me, take me, take me to the circus. Who designed this? <sighs> so what are we left with? Maybe in the top three. I mean, it's not like Mizuno in 1994. Oh my goodness, have you seen? The MP14, shh, don't tell your parents you're watching. Are you 18 or older? Look at this iron. 
Look, I wonder why Mizuno... How could Mizuno... I wonder why Mizuno is so... I wonder why this was such a good iron in the 90s. <sighs> okay. Is it getting hot in here? I need to go take a cold shower. Let's put that down. I don't want to touch that. Let's... Here, here's another Mizuno iron that came out. 96, 90... Okay. Forged. Okay. <sighs> All right. Calm down a little bit. Notice, this particular one is not a big chonker. Okay. So... There's some competition that I would have over this, but this, as far as an interesting iron that feels good, that looks good, that's not distracting, does its job, good. The problem with this is the future, okay? So in era, yes, really good. But when you go to the future, where, where we are now, and you look back and you say, oh yeah, Tommy Armor. Tommy Armor is the store brand that I saw at the store and it's a store brand and this is their old one. It's not exciting at that point. You're like, oh, yeah, hmm. Maybe I'll give this as my, my, I'll use this as my loner set kind of ideas. That's how it feels to me, okay? But that's not giving this credit. And, you know, one of the reasons why I made this channel is so we don't forget greatness. This was a really great iron. Was it the best? No. Oh, ooh. Uh, is it the most forgiving? Probably not. But it's a really, really great iron from a really great lineage of the 845S. So, yes. Is it the most desirable? No. Is it on my I would play list? Yes, absolutely. And I would say it's great. For the era. Because everybody else was lost. And it seems like only a couple of companies, Mizuno, Tommy Armour, got it. They're like, let's make something clean and good and nice. And let's go. So, let me know your thoughts and memories in the comments below. 855S. <laughs> sure. The competition in the 90s. The irons in the 90s. Whew. It's a different world. It's a crocheted mess. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you want to support this channel in another way, please visit my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you everybody for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.